Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sheridan. I work here at the Long Beach Public Library. And today I've got um, a very dear colleague of mine, super knowledgeable and super, um, you know, into traditions and, and culture and um, la belleza de la tradición Latina, indígena, todo lo que es Latinoamérica. Um, so, Luisa, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, gracias por acompañarnos. And um, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Um, thank you, Sheridan. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a toda la comunidad por estar aquí con nosotros. Um, thank you for all to all the community for being with us here today. Uh, very, very special and um, very heavy, I feel, uh, Dia de los Muertos this year. Um, first, if it's okay, I would like to start by um, just acknowledging the land that we're on. So here in Southern California, especially where we are, we in Long Beach, we are in Pavanga and uh, Tongva land. And so I just want to honor the indigenous peoples and the land that is occupied by us. Um, and I won't go too much into that, but it's important that we acknowledge the land and the history and the ancestors, especially for a program such as this. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I'm looking forward to today. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's super important, especially in, during the month of November, being um, National Native American Heritage Month. You know, obviously we should celebrate that heritage mm -hmm. all year long, but um, specifically in November, I think that mm -hmm. it's it's important to highlight that. Um, so today we're going to be talking Absolutely. about the history of uh, Dia de los Muertos. Um, and so mm -hmm. I'll start off with um, the fact that you may not know this, but Dia de los Muertos is actually a super ancient holiday that's been celebrated for over 3,000 years, some people theorize. Um, some people say that it started with the Olmecs, that sort of progenitor uh, civilization um, in Latin America, and some people say that it's even older than the Olmecs. Um, a little bit later on, sort of after sort of, you know, the Olmecs and the Toltecs and the Totihuacanos, um, when we get to the Mexica, who are the Aztecs, um, they would actually have rituals and ceremonies where they would hold processions um, with food and music and dancing around a sacred tree. Um, and that tree sort of symbolized uh, life. At the end of the two month period, because back then it was a two month celebration during the months of July and August, uh, they would actually chop the tree down to sort of sell, uh, symbolize death. And from those ashes, they would use to light, um, you know, different fires or even some of like the incense and stuff that they would do for the, the ofrendas and the altares. So it was kind of this cyclical ceremony. Um, during the, the two month period, they would hold the processions. Um, in the meantime, they would also have um, altares for their loved ones to visit them, um, where they would have food and all kinds of other stuff. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, the altares and the ofrendas, Luisa? Sure. Um, so the altar is really um, a microphone of sorts to communicate with the spirit world. And so um, because indigenous peoples of the Americas, um, in particular, we're talking about the indigenous tribes of uh, Mexic Mexico, um, death is acknowledged as very much part of life so it's the other side of life and it's nothing to fear or to um, feel a lot of anxiety about it's in the cosmology it's more of like a continuation and so um, because we're in the spirit world we can't necessarily know what's on the other side but there are various ways that our ancestors and um, peoples of, you know, the tribal peoples, indigenous peoples of the Americas did communicate with um, the spirit world, with their ancestors and whatnot. So for the altar, there is always usually pictures, like you can see this altar behind me. It's an example of our family altar that my sister made. There are pictures of our ancestors, their calaveras, sugar skulls. Um, there's favorite foods behind me. You see there's some mole, there's some Coca-Cola and beer, <laughs> mm -hmm. tomatoes and popcorn. Um, and, and then what we'll get into a little bit more is like a syncretism you could see here with 
the Virgin Mary and crucifix, um, um, those kinds of things as well. So in addition to, to these elements here, there are candles, there's copal usually um, to make an altar. I know an elder told me that it's necessary to put four elements of water, fire, earth, and air. And so there are different ways to symbolize that um, depending on what we have at hand. So I think that that's it's kind of people can take a creative, creative freedom over making their altar with the things that they have on hand. Um, another thing that is very uh, traditional to do is to clean the grave site of the of your loved one during these days. And so you clean it off from the year um, and add fresh flowers, fresh candles. It's also it could be customary to dine there. So have dinner, bring food and eat, have like a picnic there, um, as well as make pan de muertos. And so I think, I don't know if this one has it, but maybe. I'm sure you've seen it. It's kind of like a, a human figure in in, the, in a bread, a loaf of bread, um, and that again is is very customary to see. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you bring up syncretism because that's kind of the next step, right? In in it went from this completely indigenous um, tradition to um, after the invasion of the Spanish, um, they decided that in order to um, sort of help them. Um, Christianize. Um, they were going to sort of, you know, lay over the indigenous rituals in July and August with um, Catholic holidays, All Saints uh, mm -hmm. and All Souls Day on November 1st and 2nd. So they took these rituals that were sort of, you know, remembering the dead and remembering our past and put them um, underneath um, these, these Catholic mm -hmm. holidays. And so the celebration actually went from two months um, and that's two, two Mexica months, which are periods of 20 days. So a 40 day celebration, um, it went to two days, which are now November 1st um, and, and 2nd. And they overlaid sort of, you know, uh, Catholic imagery like saints and the Virgin Mary and cross crucifixes and all that, all that kind of stuff over, over what was already there, you know. Um, really cool okay. though that, that a lot of the rituals, I mean, um, survived in a, in a very similar way to the way that uh, the Mexica and their ancestors were celebrating them, you know, with mm -hmm. Tempas the marigolds that are behind me, mm -hmm. uh, candles, copal, um, bread and food and, and dining and feasting, um, and remembering the dead in a way that's um, not not sad, it's not, it's not morbid, it's not um, melancholy, but, you know, mm -hmm. sort of holding a party for them, you know, to invite them back to, to mm -hmm. be with us for a couple of days, for a few hours. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, some of your experiences um, with Dia de los Muertos, a little bit more closer to the modern day? Sure. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about this, this holiday and how before, when I was younger, it wasn't that celebrated. So um, in, I grew up in the 80s, pretty much 90s, I'm in my 40s. So um, back then it wasn't that I know I'm so I look so young. Um, <laughs> back then it wasn't really as popular as it is now. It ha didn't really hit the mainstream. Although, um, if I'm not mistaken, in the 1980s, um, the artist uh, Rene Yanez, uh, through his involvement, and I, I don't know, I, I don't want to like give wrong information, but he was very involved um, with the Galeria de la Raza in San Francisco, and he was one of the the main major Chicano artists of that time that popularized the Day of the Dead uh, processions, altars and rituals in the United States. Um, because in San Francisco Mission District, there, there existed, not so much anymore, there are people still holding on, um, resisting gentrification. Uh, there were a lot of migrants from Latin America, a lot of people from 
Mexico, from Oaxaca, from El Salvador as well, uh, Guatemala. And so um, a lot of artists were there at the time. Um, additionally, he began this uh, yearly procession and festival of sorts. And it grew year after year until, you know, the last I grew up in the Bay Area and um, one of the last times I went to a procession, it was, it was like, it was, it was just crazy. It was very, very full, uh, people of all walks of life. Um, and, and it's just so different because in my house, I didn't, like, I grew up Catholic and there wasn't that opening to do anything that was quote unquote considered pagan. So it's interesting. I mean, I think that it would be remiss if we didn't touch upon like some of the the um, like criticisms or conflicts, the tension, the cultural tension that exists between indigeneity and mexicanidad or assimilation. So um I just I want to mention that because it it speaks to the diversity of, of peoples and of practices that exist within the Mexican or Latino or Latina, Latinx communities. It's very diverse. Not everybody celebrates this. Um, and, and that's, that's okay. You know, we're all different and, um, but it's, it is interesting to understand a little more history as to why. And so that begins to break down um, assumptions and maybe like misunderstandings. Um, there's no worshiping of any, you know, gods or anything like that. It's, it's purely to uh, uh, spend time with our ancestors, ancestors <laughs> um, who were special to us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I like that you bring that up. Yeah, because people have um, sometimes an, a notion that um, if you're mm -hmm. from Latin America, whether that be Guatemala, where Dia de los Muertos is also celebrated in its mm -hmm. own way, mm -hmm. um, that you, mm -hmm. everybody who comes from there has the same traditions, eats the same foods, speaks the same languages, has the same mm -hmm. cosmology. Um, right. Just like everything, it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. One end we have people who have maintained their culture and their traditions and identify as indigenous and come from mm -hmm. an indigenous place mm -hmm. um, geographically, but also mm -hmm. And then you have people who have assimilated mm -hmm. a tiny bit, maybe assimilated a little bit more, maybe people who are completely identify as mestizo, such as mm -hmm. myself. Um, and then people who identify more as what you would say mm -hmm. European, but they're sort of like transplants, right? They live in Mexico, they live in Latin America, but they're culturally, mm -hmm. linguistically, you know, they're European. Right. Um, and yeah. and everything celebrates a little different grade of you know maybe maybe right. at my house for example we only started celebrating Dia de los Muertos in the last couple of years um, because mm -hmm. we're from Tijuana where you know it's basically the U S but south of the border um, so we we didn't really have any traditions like mm -hmm. this um, growing up in my house for sure until until just recently mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I think it's also important to mention that there are also within the diversity um, of people of our you know cultural background, there's also Chicanos, or I know it's not really like a popular <laughs> identity right now, mm -hmm. but there um, are not as much as it used to be. I think it's because um, maybe generationally, um there i don't know there isn't a, a whole lot of what do i want to say understanding of what that term means as well so um to be chicano it means that you um are in between two worlds um we you are u.s born or U, yeah u.s born some most of the time um but you're like first generation, second generation, you identify with um, and recognize and honor the indigenous ancestry. Um, 
and you you try to elevate that as much as possible it's it's difficult because as people in diaspora um we can't really know we can't really like claim oh i'm from this tribe or that tribe um i think that i'm sure people in the community would have you know a lot of information and to like further this discussion so i just really encourage i just i really um also want to say that i like to encourage like community dialogue and community community knowledge knowledges um so if or when this video comes out um uh, if people would like to comment um down below in the comment section um more on this topic of either day of the dead how you celebrate your rituals um how you identify and what that means to you in relationship to these new kind of more popularized ways that latinidad is seen in the united states um, i think that would be a really valuable conversation for us to have um, and what better place than the library to you you know start those conversations as a community yeah especially now that it's um you know with movies like the book of life and mm -hmm. and um it's it's every year it seems like it's even more pressure mm -hmm. you know, more out there um de los muertos um and that yeah. I, people who aren't necessarily from you know latin american roots um are beginning to celebrate mm -hmm. it to me i think that's mm -hmm super cool you know i mean you're sort of mm -hmm. seeing and appreciating somebody else's culture mm -hmm. and and that can be a tool for your own you know mm -hmm. introspection about your cultural practices mm -hmm. and how maybe you honor your ancestors um and so mm -hmm. for to be a tool for others i think to to look mm -hmm. to their own past and right. be the people that they love who've gone is super cool i think um mm -hmm. so i think um we've had a pretty conversation here um <laughs> i want to say um you know to everybody thank you for joining us um and you know mm -hmm. if you have um you know if you want some more information about dia de los muertos feel free to look in the library's catalog put some stuff on hold watch some movies mm -hmm. um watch this video you know which you already have if you're seeing this part comment down below um and then uh click on the next video to see how to construct your mini altar mm -hmm. and don't forget to share your altar with us um, on social media by tagging us or even by commenting on this video and letting us know what you thought about our little conversation here um thank you again luisa for joining us i don't know if you want to say any words of goodbye thank you for having me of course um, um well thanks for having me um if you haven't seen me around the library it's because i'm a full-time grad student um, in a library program uh, right now. So uh, in some way, shape or form, I'll be back and doing good work in the community. So I look forward to seeing all uh, the regulars and new faces um, at some point in the future. So thank you. I honor your ancestors. And, um, you know, I, I just want to send all of you a lot of a lot of love and support and strength during these times because we're all going through it. And um, you're not alone. Um, tell the library what you need because the library is here to serve the community. It doesn't exist without the community. The community is the heart of the library. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, let's keep let's keep <laughs> living our lives on this side. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Click on the next video uh, to start building your mini altar. And like I said, um, you know, keep talking to us. Like Luisa said, keep chatting with us, letting us know what you need. Um, and be sure to tag us in all those photos that you upload to Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook of your mini altar. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Adios. <laughs>